everybody, I am Mrs. Green and I am one of the counselors here at the high school and for the next little bit I'm going to go over some post high options for you guys. So what are you going to do after high school? But then we're also going to talk about how do you actually get graduated from high school because before you go on to life we got to get you through the high school process. Feel free to ask questions whenever you have them because I want this to really be like a conversation that we have. So this is just going over the uh, kind of areas that we're going to talk about, graduation requirements. I'm going to go over transcripts, how you read a transcript, some post-high options, and then financial aid. How do you actually pay for what you want to do after high school? So the first thing that we are going to look at is the actual graduation requirements. Now it's going to be different. So what I have up here is for those of you that are graduating between 2018 and 2020. Because starting with this year's freshmen, the class of 2021, the requirements are a little bit different. So for this group, you've got to have four years of English. You need to have three years of math at Algebra 1 or higher. Three years of science. Three years of social studies. One year of PE, which that means two classes worth one year of health, again, two classes worth, three credits of applied arts, six credits of electives, and then three credits of pathway. And what you wanna note about the pathway is if you want an endorsement, you need two and a half credits from one specific pathway. So that means if you're in the health services pathway and you wanna get the endorsement, which is a cord that you wear at graduation, you're eligible for a scholarship and it looks really good on a resume, you have to get two and a half specific classes in that pathway. But you don't have to have a pathway to graduate, you just need to get the specific credits. So this is for the standard diploma. This is what the majority of students get, but we do have other students that will get different diploma types that I'll also talk about. Now, if you're a freshman and beyond the class of 2021, it's gonna be a little bit different. All the main stuff here is the same, except for when you get down here for the career pathway. You'll need two and a half credits of career pathway, and then half a credit for your personal education plan or your PEP. So starting with 2021, we are going to actually put on your transcript the career requirements. Everyone still has to do that, but starting with 2021, we're actually gonna put it on your transcript and you'll get credit. So you'll see we pulled that half credit from the pathway area and put it down here on the PEP for that piece. We have another diploma type that's called the basic diploma. This is going to be for students often that are at Cook Campus, part-time or full-time, that will get that. And then some students that are also on individual education plans might get the basic diploma. So this is the Oregon standard. Everything is the same except there's no pathway requirement. So that's why it's only 24. Everything else in this area is the same. You still have to have the PEP and all that. It just doesn't require the three years of pathway. So this is very specific for seniors is when we make that decision. And again, it's typically for students that are attending Cook, maybe mid Willamette or a student on an IEP. It'd be something that you'd be talking to your case manager or your counselor to see if you would fit into this diploma. The next diploma option we have is a modified diploma. Again, this is for students that are on IEPs, they might qualify for the modified. It's also 24 credits, but you're gonna see that the credit type is gonna be different. English is three credits, math, two, science, two, social studies, two, PE and health, again, one, applied arts, one, and then electives, 12. So you can see that there are less requirements in the core area, and then also with math, it doesn't have to be Algebra 1 or higher. So in order to earn a modified, you're going to be working with your case manager who helps you with your IEP, 
and typically we make the decision during your sophomore year if you're going to be going for the modified diploma. So if this is something you're like, mm, I'm on an IEP, I wonder if I'm for modified or not, talk to your case manager, talk to your counselor, and they'll let you know if that's the path that you're on. If you're in some accelerated classes, you might be on a modified diploma. We also have an extended diploma. This is for students that are typically in a class called LRC2 that we have. So you'll see that you have three credits of English, two for math, two for science, two for social studies, the PE, the health, and the applied arts. So it's 12 credits versus 24 credits. And again, if you're in LRC2, then you might fall under the extended diploma option. Talk to your case manager, talk to your counselor. So those are the credit requirements. Everyone is also going to have additional requirements of essential skills. So this is the state test that we have to do. For most of you, your junior year, you will take a test called Smarter Balance, or it might be another Oregon State approved test. But you'll have to take it for math, writing, and reading, and pass that. If you don't pass it during your junior year, then we have other options for you in order to meet that requirement. We have reading and writing samples, so writing essays. For those students that have been in the United States for less than five years, you have the ability to actually do your writing samples in your native language. So if you've been here for less than five years, talk to your ELD teacher, talk to your counselor, and see if this is an option for you. We also have a math test called local option that you could take during your senior year instead of the state test. And then for those students that are on a modified or extended diploma, we have the MAPS math testing. And what you need to do is you show growth. So instead of having a score you have to meet, like 2583, instead of having that score, what we do is we test you one time, get your score, and then we test you again, and we want you to show growth in that area. So if you're on modified or extended, we do have this other way for you to meet this requirement of the essential skills. Then there is the personal education plan. So this is where it's a little bit different again for graduates of 2018 to 2020. You have these activities that you have to do, then you're gonna have some senior goals that you have to do. And we're pushing this through with our new virtual advisory. So for some of you, if you're wondering why you have to do it, because part of it's gonna meet your graduation requirements. So know these are some of the activities that you'll have to do throughout your time here at school. Then if uh, for the students for class of 2021 and beyond, we're gonna go to a different system that's gonna give you a list of all these different opportunities and you'll be able to pick through different opportunities that will give you points and then you have to reach a point system and then again you're going to get pathway pep credits that you'll need for graduation for those that are 2021 20, and beyond so really three major areas for graduation credits the testing and then the career piece those three things have to happen in order for you to cross the stage all right, so now let's talk about how you read your transcript. This is the most important thing for you guys. You each have a transcript that's gonna list all the classes you've ever taken with all the grades you've ever earned on there. And it's so important that you understand how to read it. So every transcript, this is kind of the top of the transcript here. I've, I've blacked out the information, but it's gonna have your name, it's gonna have where you're born, parents' name, all that good stuff. What's really important is what's right in here. They talk about your GPA. Does anybody here in class know what your GPA is? What it, what it means? Anybody have an idea of what it might mean? Okay, that's okay. That tells me 
that this is some really important information. So your GPA stands for your grade point average. What we do is we take every grade that you earn and we add them up and average them and get a score. And so this student here, you can see, has a 2.781. What that means is on average, this student has earned about a C plus in all of their classes. Let's see if we can get this to work. When you earn credits in classes, okay, let's see. That's an A is gonna give you four points. A B is gonna give you three points. A C gives you two. D gives you one. And F gives you, what do you think? How many points does an F give you? Zero. You don't get any points if you earn an F. So what we have to do is we have to add up your grades and average them to find out what this GPA is going to mean for you. If we look now on here, so on this standard diploma here, so this is just a snapshot of someone's actual transcript. When we are looking here, so they earned a B in English, that would give them how many points? Three points. Three points. Now when we look at pass fail, a fail again is going to give you zero points. A pass actually doesn't get calculated into your GPA. We don't even look at that. This A is going to give four points. This W, that's going to give you zero points. So what happens is we add this up. So three plus three plus three plus three plus, three plus four plus four divided by how many we counted out is going to give you this GPA right here of 3.33. So on average, this term, this student earned about a B. That's what that means. So every transcript's going to have every grade you've earned, every credit that you've earned with that. Each class gives you half a credit. So most students can earn up to eight credits per semester, unless you're taking other classes or maybe doing transitions and earning more credit with that. Your transcript also has this box up here. If you want to know what credits do I still need for graduation, this is put in and out for you. It tells you your required, so what you need for graduation, how much you've completed already, and then what you still need for graduation. Your transcript does not include the classes you're currently in. So if you want to know what you still need, you've got to take into consideration the classes that you still have. This is just a picture of what a basic diploma would look like. You can see the 24 credits up there. And then I also want to point out the essential skills. So once you're junior year and you start taking the test you need for graduation, we put on the transcript as well when you have met that test. So this student right here, mathematics, they have met the requirement for math. So they still need to meet the requirement for reading and writing, but they've met it for math. But again, we don't put that on your transcript till the end of your junior year, senior year. Here's something of what a modified transcript is going to look like. You can see there's some accelerated classes, fundamentals of lit classes. And then again, we're down at the 24 credits right there. And then here's a picture of LRC2. So you can see that this student has taken some LRT2 health classes, math classes. And so that's why they're going for the extended diploma. Okay, so now that you have gotten yourself graduated, you've got all your credits, you've taken your test, now what? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? College, a four-year university, is not for everybody. And the path to get there isn't the same for everybody. So I want you guys to know there are other opportunities out there for you. So some things to consider. What is your diploma type? That could make a difference as to where you could go 
and when you could get there. Admissions requirements. If they're asking that you have a 3.5 GPA to get into the college, but you only have a 2.7, then you don't meet that requirement yet. Program of study. If you want to be a welder, I don't recommend you go to beauty school because they're not going to have what you want. So you got to make sure what you want to do, the school has what you want. Location. Do you want to be close to home so that your mom can still do your laundry? Or do you want to be as far away as possible so you can be on your own? How big is the campus? We've got an awesome school here in town. We have Linfield that actually has less students at Linfield than go to this high school right now. Or do you want to be at a school that's really huge? I went to the University of Minnesota. They have 70,000 students at that university. Some people might not want to be with 70,000 students. They might want to be at a school that has only 1,600. So that is really important when you're deciding where you go, what you want to do. How much does it cost? Which we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then I think really important, job prospects. Just because you go and get a degree somewhere, does that mean you actually are going to get a job? I graduated from a university. I went there for four and a half years. And I ended up working in retail. I had to go on and do something else. The job prospect actually wasn't there for me with what I wanted to do. All right, career technical schools. We have some amazing technical schools in the area. So these schools are certification programs. Some of them might only be six months. So you go, you're learning exactly what you need for what you want to do, maybe six months to up to two years. You're out of there, you're on your job. The admissions process and FAFSA, which is financial aid, those vary depending on the school. There are some technical schools that don't take financial aid, which are loans and grants from the government. So that's important to know that if they're gonna take it or not take it. Also with the types of diploma. So the standard and the basic diploma, that's really gonna get you anywhere to any of these programs. The modified and the extended, maybe. It's going to depend on the school and the program if with that diploma type you can get into that school. Some areas are mechanics, culinary arts, if you want to be a chef, if you want to be a cosmetologist, do hair, do makeup design. Those are some of the programs we're talking about for career technical. Some schools that we have kind of in the Pacific Northwest Aveda Institute of Portland, that's a beauty school. Um, Oregon Culinary Institute, we actually have several culinary schools here in Oregon. The Art Institute does art, but they also have a culinary program there. And I know we have a lot of people that are into automotive as well. And so there's WyoTech, there's the uh, Universal Technical Institute that you're going there, you're busting out a certificate in a year, and then you're on the job. So this can be a really great thing if you're like, I don't want to go to a four-year university. I don't want to go to a community college. I know exactly what I want to do, and I just want to take that little bit of time, get the skills and the training, and then get my job. Job Corps. Job Corps is an awesome opportunity for those that qualify and um, are really interested in this. So Job Corps is career technical education for 16 to 24 year olds. 16. You can actually still earn your high school diploma in Job Corps as well. You can earn your high school diploma, your GED, and you can get a career technical certificate there. You do have to be a US citizen to get into Job Corps. No cost. It's free. You don't pay for Job Corps. It includes housing, meals, health care, clothing, allowance, all free for those that qualify to be there. They have many, many, many fields of training. So you can see on here landscaping, culinary arts, carpentry, dental, hotel management. And they have 125 locations all across the United States. And just here in Oregon, we have Portland, Astoria, and Troutdale. 
if you are interested in getting some sort of career technical education and you're willing to go and live on site, this can be amazing. I can't say it enough. It is free. You get all of these things, all of this support around you. Everyone there is going and focusing on trying to get this education. You get it, you come back, you have your certificate, you have your degree in this, and you have life skills as well. Every year, um, we take students to go on an orientation for this. So if this piques your interest, here's gonna be your website to go to that has tons of information, and then I strongly encourage you to talk to your case manager or your counselor about this to find out how this program would work for you. Apprenticeships. This is really cool, again, if you know what you wanna do and are ready to just do it. They combine paid on-the-job training, paid on-the-job training. You actually get money while you're going to school and working. Your pay increases as you go. Most programs are about two to four years, so it's a little bit longer than the other programs we had been talking about. Um, diploma types are gonna vary, your standard and your basic, absolutely. Modified and extended, maybe, GED, maybe. Fields of training, electrician, welder, HVAC, plumbing, this is like your hands-on type of work. And so apprenticeship means you're actually on a job five days a week, you're working next to someone, you're working on the field, you're building houses, you're getting paid for that, and then you're taking some night classes and some day classes as well. Here's your website if you're interested. Chemeketa has a great apprenticeship program. And I also want to show you this. So if you go on to their website, they're going to break down every single type of apprenticeship program there is. And you can find this exact type of information for each one of them. So I pulled this up for a general journeyman inside electrician. So if you want to be the person that goes to new buildings and puts in all the electrical work or you're working and to help fix up the new high school to make sure you get all the electricity going. This is what it would look like. So classroom hours, you have about 144 to 180 hours per year on the job training of 8,000 hours, which sounds long, but remember you're doing this full time over about four years. And then your wages. It says apprentice start off about 40% of the journeyman wage. So an electrician gets about $40 an hour. A base electrician, about $40 an hour. And so when you're doing the apprenticeship program, that means you're going to be getting about $20 an hour just as the apprentice while you're working going to school so that when you finally get your degree, you're starting off with that. That's making more money than I make here. So this can be a really fantastic opportunity, again, if you know what you want and you're really interested in that hands-on type of work. Okay, next one is community college. We all know we've got Chemeketa here, which is a fantastic school. So they've got one to two year programs but community colleges also have some certificate programs. We also have some that do beauty school that have automotive as well. So it's important to compare those uh, technical schools with the community colleges. You can get different degrees. You can get a transfer degree. Maybe you want to go to Portland State, but you know that your grades in high school aren't gonna get you to Portland State right now. So you go to the community college for two years and then you can transfer to Portland State and they actually don't look at what you do in high school if you go to that community college for two years. There's no minimum GPA. Doesn't matter what that GPA looked like, whether it was 1.0 or 4.0. There's usually not an application fee. There's a much lower tuition. Community college is thousands of dollars cheaper than a university is going to be. They do have a placement test that's called the AccuPlacer, but it doesn't um, determine if you get in or not. It just determines what level courses you're gonna be in. And every diploma option 
can get into a community college. Standard, basic, modified, extended, there is a program at a community college for you. And then typically you apply online. And then of course there's the four-year college and university. It's good to know that they'll take standard and basic diplomas. If you're on an extended or modified, you can't go directly to a four-year university. You could go to the community college first and take that path in, but you can't go directly in. You typically have to have at least a 3.0 GPA, a C or higher in your core classes, English, science, social studies, math, and you have to have two years of the same foreign language, and you have to take an SET or ACT, and their applications do have timelines, meaning there's a deadline. February 1st is a deadline, March 15th is a deadline. If you miss it, you don't get in. Whereas community colleges, usually you have the ability of turning it in whatever, whenever you can. So how are you guys gonna pay for this? I know that's a big question. So we obviously know that Job Corps, if you qualify for Job Corps, you don't have to pay for anything. The other ones, you are gonna have to come up with some money. So financial aid, when we say FAFSA, that means grants, which are free money that your family could qualify depending on the income that your parents or your guardians make each year. Then there are loans, which is money the government gives you, and then you pay back with interest, which means they charge you even more for how long it takes to pay back. Work study, if you qualify for that, that means you can get a job on campus. Maybe you're working in the bookstore, maybe you're working in the cafeteria, and they pay you a little bit, but then they also pay for part of your tuition. All diploma types are eligible for financial aid. We recommend that you do your financial aid by October 1st of your senior year. If it's past October 1st, that's okay, there's no deadline. You just the sooner you get in, the better. And then there's also the ORSA, which is on the OregonStudentAid.gov. If you are not a US citizen, there is still money available from the state of Oregon for you. You won't be able to qualify for federal loans, but you would be able to qualify for money from the state of Oregon. And again, even if you're going to a career technical school, even if you're gonna to go to a trade school, you're gonna to wanna to look at the financial aid piece for that as well. Scholarships. Scholarships are also free money, but they're free money that you kinda of have to work for a bit. So you don't have to pay them back. Actually, here in the counseling center, we have a scholarship wall where there is a whole bunch of scholarships that you can go and see if you qualify. And that's kind of the thing with scholarships. You have to qualify for them. Some of them might be scholarships for redheads that are descendants from Ireland. Well, that's not me, I'm not gonna qualify. But some of them might just be if you want to go to a culinary school. Okay, well, I wanna to go to a culinary school, so I'm gonna qualify for that. There's also something called OSAC, the OSAC, OSAC Scholarship. There's over 500 scholarships on there. Now it's gonna take kind of a bit of time to go through all those, because you're not gonna qualify for all 500 of those, but to find out which ones you qualify for, and then it's one application for that. There are scholarships for every single type of student. I think a lot of kids think that scholarships are only for the A students. They're only for those students that are doing clubs and sports and honor roll. Yeah, there are some for them, but there are scholarships for every single kid in this building. It's going to take you some work. It's not going to be necessarily easy. You're going to have to go through and do some stuff, but it is worth it. Scholarships could be $50. Scholarships could be $50,000. Books can cost hundreds of dollars. So even just getting one scholarship to cover books will be amazing for you. We also have some state grants. Again, money you don't have to pay back. There's the Oregon Opportunity Grants, which is for financial need, so you'll have to qualify for it. First come, first serve, and you wanna complete either the FAFSA or the ORSA. That could get you about $2,200. Each year it varies a little bit. And then there's the Oregon Promise. That's for residents that have been in Oregon for over a year. 
and if you go to a community college, that's very specific. And then if you have a 2.5 GPA or higher, you can earn between a thousand and about thirty-five hundred dollars of free money. All it's going to take is for you to go look, sign up, and you might get this. These grants aren't competitive. That means if you qualify and the state still has money, you're going to get them. You're not competing against anyone else for these. All right, that was the real fast quick of it all. If anyone does have questions or concerns, again, talk to your counselor, talk to your case manager, go to the career center. There's always someone available, and if we don't have the answer right away, we'll be able to find it. Whether that's looking at your transcript and not sure you're understanding why there's an F and you thought it was supposed to be a C, or trying to figure out what diploma you're on, or going, I want to get some free money, help me with some scholarships. There's a lot of people here that are willing to help you guys. We want to find the best path for all of you after high school. So thank you very much.